Right now, New Yorkers are in the midst of a hidden crisis. The aqueduct that supplies half of the city's drinking water is leaking 30 million gallons every single day. This aqueduct isn't an ancient Roman structure like you've seen in pictures. It's a massive 85 mile long tunnel buried hundreds of feet below the ground. So far, New Yorkers haven't felt the effects of the leak. But if the crack gets worse, the city's water supply could be at risk. Hudson River, right over there. We're going underneath it. This fall, we were given a rare opportunity to travel some 700 feet below ground to see the repair work that's being done. This is a video about a problem so complex, it's taken over 30 years to solve. Are you scared at all? Like, is it a little freaky I, I for you? I did think this morning, what happens if it caves in while we're down there? We die. We, yeah, exactly. We die doing what we love. How are you, man? Good to see you. This is John Milgram. He's the head of external affairs for the DEP, and every time we're with him, we see something really cool. Hang here. Perfect. Um, you're fine here. I mean, don't wander around because we do have everything on the group. Guys, how are you? Mr. Commissioner, good, good to, to see, see you again. This is a pretty <laughs> unique thing. Everybody sign in. Biggest part of this, guys, is we just go through kind of the hazards that you'll be encountering there, right? Don't touch anything. There are ball valves that are under pressure. This is how we're gonna get down there in this cage. Look at it shaking around. This is so crazy that we're about to do this. Uh, is anybody claustrophobic at all? Everyone's like, who are these guys? Where is the, the leak? The vast majority of the leak is pretty much just to the left of that power plant that you see there. Remember, the Hudson here is about 80 feet deep. So when you're talking 600 feet below sea level, Way it's all it. solid rock where we are with the tunnels. We will accelerate after we go down a little bit, so it'll feel like we're starting to go down faster. Hudson River, right over there. We're going underneath it. Uh, any loud noises, free fall experiences are- Free fall, don't say that word. The, uh, part of the <laughs> Don't experience. say free fall, John. <laughs> Can you just give us a, time, a sense of timeline? We're about two weeks away from the initial shutdown of the Delaware. It's altogether, it's an eight month project to make the connection. We've started some blasting to get a little closer to the actual current aqueduct. It'll be about 90 feet away from the rock wall that we're going to see. Uh, that's flowing currently about 700 million gallons a day down into the city. Before we actually get into the tunnel, I just need to explain how crazy it was that we got to go down there. This isn't just any old tunnel. First of all, at 85 miles long, this is the longest tunnel in the world. When it was completed in 1945, it was considered one of the greatest feats in engineering history. No one has been inside this tunnel since 1958 because it's been in constant use, moving hundreds of millions of gallons of water to the city every single day. And after this project's completed, no one will go back into the tunnel for close to 100 years. All right, let's get back in there. Hey. Thank you. That was our trip. Journey to the center of the earth. Watch in your step, everybody. Right? We should just get a quick intro again, in the great tradition of having you introduce yourself. Okay. I'm Rit Agarwal. I'm the commissioner of the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Great to see you again. Good to see you. Where are we right now? We are about 700 feet below ground, up in the town of Wappingers, New York, at what we call Shaft 5B in the Delaware Aqueduct, and we are standing within the bypass tunnel. So we are standing within a new tunnel that in six months or so will bring a large chunk of our daily water consumption to New York. So this is a project that's 30, over 30 years in the making? So, is that fair to say? Yeah, this, this project really originated with the realization in the 1990s that the aqueduct was leaking. Right. Not catastrophically, but nonetheless, it was leaking water. It was making its way to the, to the surface. DEP started investigating in the late 90s, early 2000s, around about 2005, 2006. We started work in earnest on planning how you would bypass what is one of our critical sources of water. Let's take a closer look at the bypass tunnel Rit is talking about. The tunnel we're standing in was built to go around the damaged section of the Delaware aqueduct. In order to finish the connection to the existing aqueduct, the city needs to shut off the Delaware's water supply for six to eight months. That's half a year where New York City's largest water tunnel is fully offline. If everything doesn't go perfectly, 
New Yorkers could run out of water. Is it all right if I take the glasses off for safety? I'm just like, they keep fogging, and I feel like oh. I'm looking at you through a, we're under, there's a lot of yeah. humidity down here. Exactly, exactly. It's a wet environment. It's gonna get a lot wetter in a couple of months. <laughs> I just wanna talk about the shutdown and how that's gonna impact the water supply. Are people's showers gonna not work? So a New Yorker probably will see no change every now and then, and, and this isn't just about this project, our 19 reservoirs all taste a little different. So as we change where the water is coming from, some people might notice a little bit of a taste difference, but it's always gonna be safe. We're doing the same amount of testing as we always do throughout the system. Uh, and so really we do not expect any problems. A quick note on how a tunnel this size is dug. It was dug with a tunnel boring machine, TBM. It's essentially this massive circle of grinding wheels that's lowered down. It's like a drill the size of a train. Yeah. yeah, on the front of the machine, yeah. there are 50 electric motors that drive 50 steel wheels that weigh about 250 pounds each. And the machine, the entire head rotates. So all those are cutting and grinding, and then the machine also pushes forward at the same time. How quickly does that, does the tunneling happen? 20 feet a day. 20 yeah. feet a day. So what is this section? So this is literally the rock face where uh, what did we say, roughly 90 feet from that rock wall is the existing Delaware Aqueduct. Okay. A lot of what this project is about is completing the, the punch through to Going the existing the aqueduct, sealing off the old flawed part. And we will now be standing where water will flow through to New York City for the next several hundred years. And in the flawed old part of the tunnel just becomes be sealed off history and it's just, oh, it's just yeah. decommission 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 <laughs> yeah we can't tell a story without talking about a major new york event that happened just a few weeks after our visit to the construction site the drought warnings in effect in the city it has now been the driest seven week stretch in central park history the driest october we've ever had to this date a historic drought in the northeast reduced city reservoir supply by 25 percent so because of this drought, the mayor and the DEP postponed the final stages of the repair and restarted the flow of water through the Delaware Aqueduct. Plans to restart construction are currently in development. New York City has to constantly invest in and maintain its critical infrastructure. Sometimes there's maintenance that you only have to do every hundred years. You know, you gotta do your laundry every few days, but you rebuild a dam every hundred years or so. And if you maintain infrastructure well, it could last forever. And you can't do your laundry if there's no water coming into you the You can. City. There are a lot of things you can't do if there's no water. And we're out. Back up. The last time people went into the Delaware, 1958, uh, they drove an army jeep. This is uh, not going to be seen by many people after a few months now. What's the most interesting thing about your job? Yeah, I look forward to meeting with John Milgram every day. <laughs> Now, I love to build things. We become civil engineers so we can get our picture taken next to large infrastructure when we build it. 